fast and they they uh, do these spiritual disciplines or whatever so that they can be connected with God. I just want to admonish you based on what the Bible says in Matthew chapter number six. Make sure you do it in private. Don't go around announcing to everybody, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going off of social media for 21 days because I'm going to fast. You did exactly what the scripture said not to do. The Bible says this. It says if you're going to fast, this is what the Bible says. It says wash your face, brush your teeth, put oil on your face and act like nothing is going on. Don't walk around looking like death. Don't walk around telling people, I'm sorry, I can't eat with you because I'm fasting this year. Just do it. Look at somebody say, just do it. Because if we don't get to a place where we actually just obey God for what his word is instead of looking for brownie points from other people, then we miss out on the blessing. The Bible says that if you do it in secretly, he'll bless you openly. But anytime you try to pat yourself on the back openly, that's your reward. And because I'm looking for God to do something greater in my life, I can't tell you everything I'm doing with God. I just got to wait for the manifestation of it so that I can testify and say, look at how the Lord, look at what the Lord has done. And so spending that time with God privately, spending that time turning away my plate, just don't, just don't answer it. Just don't answer your social media if you're fasting. Just don't answer it. But just do what you need to do. If you pray, you pray. Don't tell, you ain't got to tell the world. Just do it. Everybody say, just do it. That's faith. Because a lot of times you have to believe God for stuff that you don't necessarily see the manifestation of it yet. And sometimes you have to learn how to just stand in it. You have to stand and say, I believe God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So in this season of my life, I'm trying to please God. Say amen. 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 So I need you to understand. I just wanted to throw that in there just so that you understood. This is a good time to be able to do that, to set your year on the good track. And so listen, in the story here, the boat that Jesus sends the disciples out on the lake on, it, it, be, it begins to get hit by all of these crazy waves, and then Jesus is actually sitting on the mountaintop watching this thing happen. And I want to suggest to you from the very beginning that God is watching everything that is happening in your life. God is watching everything that is happening in your life, because your measure of faith will never grow into mature faith without something to test it. Again, Again, your measure of faith will never grow into mature faith without something to test it. The Bible says in Romans 12 and 3 that God has dealt unto every man a measure of faith. So there is nobody that is alive that does not have faith. But for your faith to grow, it must encounter tests. It must encounter waves. It must encounter struggle because God is trying to grow you through the test. Understand that just like the scripture says, he was actually on the mountaintop watching every single thing that was going on in their life. Can I suggest to you that God is actually in heaven watching everything that's going on in your life, every struggle that you have, every wave that's beating up against your life and against your boat, God is watching. That should give you some confidence to know that you're not alone because God is trying to grow you. Some of you guys, if you would learn how not to despise your test, learn how not to get irritated by your test, learn how to allow patience to have its perfect work because when patience has its perfect work, the Bible says you'll be lacking nothing. And so if God is testing your patience, it's because he's growing you into something. Y'all quiet this morning. Y'all quiet this morning. I can't even hear y'all, but I can just feel it in the room. That God is trying to test you because the measure of your faith will never grow into mature faith without something to test it. And so this is why you got to learn how to now start celebrating God in your trials and in your tests. Don't curse God. Be like Job and say, man, I don't care what's going on. I still trust you. I still believe that you are God. Even if you don't do what I want you to do, I still trust you. Is there anybody here this morning, you still trust God. Yeah, see, what you have to understand is this, that all the calendar deal was was just a date change. But you have to understand that if your mentality didn't change with the date, you will stay in the same place that you was. And this is the reason why I'm trying to preach faith to you. Because I don't want you to have the same mentality on December the 31st that you have today. I want you to press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And I'm trying to give you the energy, the spiritual energy to accomplish what God has for you. Say amen. 
So understand that God is not far from you. He actually is closely walking and watching how you respond. God is not far from you. He actually is closely watching how you will respond. I said, y'all know how I say it all the time, that the teacher is always in the room while you're taking the test, but he's always silent because he needs you to really put some energy into it. This year, if you're going to see all that God wants to do, you got to put some energy into it this year. This year, it can't just be, oh, well, I'm just going to wait and just going to be this. I'm just going to wait for it to happen. You'll be in the same place next year at the same time. If you don't do something different, you won't get nothing different. If you don't put a different spiritual energy into it, you won't get nothing different. If you don't change your mind, you're going to stay in the same place. But I'm, I'm trying to tell you right now, I got goals for myself that by July, I don't want to be the same person. Yeah. I'm not going to wait until January to, to see if I if I change or not. No, I got incremental goals. Hey, by March, you need to make sure that this is in order. Hey, by July, you got to make sure this is in order. By August, you got to make sure you got to do some things in order because I'm not going to waste another year going through crisis mode. Yeah. And I'm not going to do it. Not this year. Say man. So before the, before the light here, before the light of day comes, Jesus comes walking out on the lake, and the disciples think it's a ghost. I'm still tracking through uh, Matthew chapter number 14 because I need y'all to get the, the context of it. And so they think this is uh, this is scripture here, uh, that's scripture number 25, 26, I'm sorry. They think that Jesus is actually uh, walking around. They think it's a ghost out there, so they get afraid. And I need you to know this, that man, it's something about how when we get afraid, we start getting getting so superstitious. Haven't you seen people that when they get afraid, they get so superstitious that the reason why my tire went down is because I didn't pay my tires last week. God is getting me back. Oh, I'm getting karma now. What the heck is that? I'm getting karma now. Especially when Christians say stuff like that. I just want to go, get in your word. I'm getting karma. Yeah, you reap what you sow, but there's no such thing as karma. Thank God for Jesus that I don't, in some instances, get the very thing that I deserve. Let me say it to you again. Thank God for Jesus because in some instances I didn't get what I actually deserved. Thank God for his grace. Say thank God for his grace. Grace through faith. Thank God. Lord, have mercy. Trying to get y'all to understand this. So, I mean, you know, we start getting all this, we get all superstitious, and then we allow fear to kick in in our life. The Bible actually says in the story that they actually got terrified. And they actually allow a spirit of fear to take a hold of their life where it paralyzed them. I need you to understand that there is a difference between doing things afraid and allowing the spirit of fear to paralyze you. The Bible says that God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love power and a sound mind. The spirit of fear paralyzes you. The spirit of fear allows you to magnify problems bigger than the solution maker. The spirit of fear allows you to think that there is no way out. It allows you to walk in this intrepidation that you're never going to accomplish, that there is no way out of this. And I'm trying to get you to understand that God said to them, he said, listen man, I didn't give you a spirit of fear. This is 2 Timothy 1 and 7. Write that down. I want that to be something that you understand this year. Because if you're going to be a conqueror you got to conquer fear. You cannot do what God calls for you to do and you operate in the spirit of fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. Don't allow fear to paralyze you. Conquer fear or fear will conquer you. You will see people going forward. You will see people advancing in life and you'll be like, I wish that was me. And guess what? It can be you. I need you to break fear this year. Break intimidation this year. Quit being terrified of failure and go ahead and step out. Quit being afraid of fear. Let me tell you something. I'm glad now I'm able to tell you from personal experience that failure sometimes can be your best friend. Because when you fail, you've got nothing else to lose. you got to step out on whatever God calls you to do. It allows you to walk in this obedience that you can't, you can't no longer surrender to fear. You have to say, i got to do it or else. That's what God is trying to get us to. Hopefully you get to a place where you say, you know what, God, I got to do this or else. I am no longer going to be in my life where I'm just going to wait for things to happen. I'm about to make something happen. Say amen. amen. So then in verse number 27, Jesus tells the disciples something, and he says this. He says, take courage. Take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. He said, take. Say, take. Take. 
take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. And so understand, I need you to do this this year. I need you to take courage this year. I need you to take it. I need you to not allow fear to hold you in bondage and stagnant this year, church. I need you to aggressively snatch your courage. And this is what he talks about when it deals with take. Take has to do with this aggression. I aggressively snatch my courage. I'm not going to pray for it. I'm going to aggressively snatch my courage. I'm going to go after it with all of my might, and I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it with some authority. Yeah. And this is what God is trying to get some of y'all to do. Some of y'all have allowed your personality to even hold you in a place where you're not experiencing the fullness of God because you'll make an excuse to say it's my personality. But guess what? It was God that gave you your personality, and it was God that gave you faith. I need you to choose your faith over your personality. Come on. Aggressive. I'm aggressively going after my God. So, well, I'm afraid of standing in front of people. Aggressively take courage. I'm afraid to start it. Aggressively take courage. Aggressively go after it. Take it by force. And I'm trying to get you to inspire you this morning. That's why it's cold in here because it forces you to have to say, either I want it or I'm going to take it by force. I just somebody and say, take it. Take it by force. And the Bible says in verse number 28, this is our theme. It says, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come out on the water. Lord, if it is you, tell me to come out on the water. Know this, that bold faith will always require risk. 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 This is for y'all that go and sit in the back. This is for y'all that sit on the side. This is for y'all that try not to be a part of it. If you're going to see what God has for you, you're going to require some risk. You have to say, God, pull me closer. God, I don't want to find a way not to be a part. God, I'm going to find a way to aggressively be a part because of what the things you have for me. I'm no longer going to take a back seat. I'm no longer going to allow complacency. I'm preaching better than y'all talking back to me today, but it's all right. I'm not going to allow complacency of the boat to keep me stagnant in life. If you're going to see all that God has for you, it's going to require for you to step up and step a little forward. It's going to require for you to say, I need some energy in this because I'm taking courage. I'm no longer going to be afraid. So God, man, he's been challenging me. I'm like, all right, God, yeah, we can raise this $45,000. Yes, what? Yes, it requires a risk. Yeah, we can see 125 adults in here by December. Yeah, it requires risk. Yeah, God, you want us on TV? It requires risk. Yeah, God, you want us on radio? It requires risk. Yeah, God, you want us on billboards? It requires risk. Say risk. Risk. Going after it with all of my heart, my mind, and my soul. I spent too many years complacent. I spent too many years wondering what other people are going to say about me. I spent too many years trying to measure up and make you happy for what God wants for me. In this season of my life, I'm going after what all I got. You scream. Go after it with all you got. I'm sitting here in a room full of boring people today, and I need you to understand that maybe you will praise God at home because you're going to go after it with all of your might. All of your might. Every piece of strength in me, I'm going after it with all of my might. Is there anybody in here that's going to go after it with all of their might? Oh, Otherwise, so imagine with me in the story here. Imagine this, that you have 12 guys here on a boat. You have 12 guys in here sitting on this boat, and you see this storm, and these waves are c- completely bashing this boat. And they're sitting in this boat, and they're like, what in the world are we going to do? And then Peter sees this potential of being able to get out of this storm, and he sees Jesus walking on the water. And Peter decides to say, you know what, Lord, if it is you, if it is you, bid me, call me out on the water. And imagine other people in the boat say, how dumb is that? Peter, do you understand that there is a freaking storm out here, that this boat is being beat up? Can you imagine people saying, Peter, that's so dumb. Can you imagine people saying, ain't no way in the world I would do that. Can you imagine other people on the boat saying, man, he's crazy. How dumb is this dude thinking that he's going to walk out on the water? And I'm here today really to preach to a couple of you guys, and really I want to tell you to go for it. I'm trying to get you to understand that it is time for you to get out of the boat. Do you have faith? And listen, I would rather, I would rather be on the boat, I would rather 
be on the water with Jesus than in the boat with mediocre people. Again, I would rather be on the water with Jesus than in the boat with mediocre people. I would rather be on the water with Jesus where it requires some risk than to be in the boat with mediocre people. People that don't want to go forward, people that ain't trying to push forward, people that just want to complain about what's going on but they don't want to do nothing about it. They want to complain about the situation but don't want to put their hand to it. They don't want to go after it with all of their might. I would rather be on the water with Jesus knowing that he'll save me if I fall than in a boat with people that'll crucify me and we'll all die together. I mean, if you guys are saying, I'm not going to be in the boat no more with mediocrity. I'm conquering mediocrity this year. This year I'm walking in the spirit of excellence. Yes, Lord. This year I'm walking in the spirit of might. Yes, Lord. This year I'm going after it with all of my might. Shout, go for it. Go for it. Yeah, man, you can call me crazy. You can talk about me all you want to. You can say I'm out of my mind. You can call me whatever. But I'm going for it in 2015. I'm going after this thing with all of my might. I'm going for broke in 2015. I'm going for growth in 2015. I'm going to see advancement in growth and maturity in 2015. I'm getting out of the boat. Can I tell somebody to get out of the boat this year? It's time for you to step out and put your foot on the water and say, God, if you call me, I'm going. Yeah. I'm going for it. And so Peter then gets out of the boat, which is so interesting to me, because Peter then gets out of the boat and he starts walking on water towards Jesus. But then he sees the wind. He begins to sink. And then he begins to call out to the Lord. He says, Lord, oh Lord, please save me. And so understand that faith in Christ puts your focus on him, not the situation that's surrounding your life. When you have true faith in Christ, it allows you to set your focus in on Christ and not your circumstance in your situation. If you find yourself meditating more on your problem than you do Christ, you got to change your focus. Remember last week I told you something? Remember that faith and fear are powered by one thing. It's called focus. Whatever you focus on, you magnify. And so I'm learning in this season of my life to magnify the solution and not the problem. I'm learning in this season of my life to magnify God and not my situation. I'm learning in this season of my life to speak by faith and walk by faith and not by sight. I'm learning in this season of my life to not allow people to keep me in one place of bondage and mediocrity, but to walk for the thing that God has for me. That if I have to go by myself, then I'm going by myself because I truly, truly, truly believe that what God calls for me and God has for me is better than the boat that I'm in right now. Can I preach to somebody in here and let you know that, the, that God has greater for you, that greater things are in store for you, and it's better than what you fear. Why don't you trade in mediocrity for faith? Why don't you trade in all of these sorrows for joy and go hard after God? Come on here this morning. And so faith in Christ puts your focus on him, not your situation. Understand this. This is the, the, the screen note for you. That most of us are focused on the impossibility of the problem instead of focusing on the God that specializes in things impossible. Again, most of us are focused on the impossibility of the problem instead of focusing on the God that specializes in the impossible. When you have faith in God, he specializes in the impossible. When it looks like there is no way out and it looks completely impossible, I want you to know that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that he can do, he can ask or think. You might have things in your life that you feel like you'll never make it out of, but your faith can get you out of it. Say, my faith. My faith, my faith, my faith. My faith. So understand this, that when, if, when, or if, when, or if, you fall. When or if you fall, you can call on Jesus to save you, and his arm is never too short, man, to save you. And this is just so good here in the text here, because Peter gets out there. He's walking on water. He gets out there. He's walking, and then he begins to look at the wind, and then he begins to sink, and then he begins to call on Jesus, and Jesus saved him. And basically, this is what's interesting, because so many people see this as sarcasm from Jesus. When they look at Jesus' statement, they see it as sarcasm or they see it as him being cruel, but I actually see this as a statement of reminder. He says to Peter, he says, 
says here in verse number 31, immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. And he says, you of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? And let me help you understand that this is where you really need to get happy because this will help you understand that God, is all he's trying to do is put you in a reminder of something. All Jesus is saying to us is this. If you've seen me be a provider in the past and you know that there was no possible way for him to come through for you, why in the world would you doubt me in this situation? He said, Peter, you literally got out of the boat. You walked on water that is completely impossible, but you allowed something that you saw to take your eyes off of me. He's saying to you today, if God healed you in the past, why would you allow something that God came up in your life today to cause you to doubt God? All you got to do is put yourself in remembrance. If he brought you out on the water, if he brought you through the flood, and he brought you through the trial, this he can bring you through too. Y'all going to get that revelation today. Y'all going to get that revelation today. Because when God brings back to your remembrance all the stuff that he has done for you, when the doctor said you're about to die, and then God healed your body, when they said we're about to take the house from you, and God provided the money, when He said, if I can bring you through this, I can bring you through that. If I provided for you when you had nothing, why would you doubt me today? So it was a statement of remembrance that he's bringing Peter to. And he's like, dude, Peter, first of all, hold the way. You straight up walked on water, homie. You walked on water. It is completely impossible. So why would you doubt? Why are you doubting? For something you see from something you experience. This is what he's trying to get you to understand. When you experience God, nothing you see matters. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I'm going to trade y'all in for a new church next week. Yeah, the, the one the people that say, oh, yeah, I, I received that. I get that. That, yeah, I, I'm in this season of my life. I'm not going to doubt God. He's bought me through too much. I'm not going to doubt him this year. Yeah, he said he was going to do it for me. I'm not doubting you. I trust you. Do it. Don't be afraid. I can definitely do it. So now 
I knew from God can't do it to God will. Now that's why I'm operating on the level of faith. God will. It looks completely impossible, but God will. God is going to do it. All I'm doing is just waiting in expectation. I'm putting my faith with my works. I'm making sure that things are in order. Making sure that things are right. Because all I'm doing now is trusting God for the increase. Can I suggest to you that God is trying to get you to trust him for the increase in your life? If God can bless you once, he can bless you again. If God can give you the favor to start the business, he can give you the favor to expand the business. If God gave you the favor to get into the relationship, he can give you the favor to grow the business. Yeah, you can be sick in your body, but there's faith that you can put on this sickness and God can heal your body. I'm trying to get you to operate in faith. Say faith. Faith, 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 faith. faith, faith, faith. Now, so definitely God wants to provide. And then if he can do that, certainly he can do this and greater. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Thank you so much, Jonathan Jefferson, because he stirred my faith the other night. When we had the New Year's Eve service, he began to stir my faith and we began to see. It's like God can do the unusual. God can do the unthinkable. God can do the impossible. God can do whatever. And so it just been in my head that I don't care what it looks like. God can do the unthinkable. God can do the unusual. God can do the impossible. God can do whatever. God can do whatever in your life. He can do the unthinkable in your life. He can do the impossible in your life. He can do the things that you never imagined. Shout whatever. If God, what God wants you to do is he wants to bring you to the other side. But he wants you to enlarge your faith right now. As we go through this series, I'm going to teach you more about your faith because I need you to stretch out on your faith. I need you to build your measure of faith because what God wants to do in your life is going to be something that you've never seen before. He's about to take you to the other side in your life. Think, yeah, 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 yeah. He's about to take you to the other side. He's going to bless you in unimaginable ways. He's going to take you from faith to faith, from glory to glory. Is there anybody here that's saying, God, I'm up for the challenge? Stretch my faith this year. Now test me this year. Test me this year. Try me this year. Oh, God, whatever, whatever you do, I'm going to stay with you because I believe that you're about to do something awesome in my life. You're about to move mountains in my life. I'm about to allow faith to move in my life so that I can see the power of God manifest in my life. Yes, God. Faith. Do you have it? Or do you talk it? Do you say the right stuff? But do you stand in it? A confident reliance. A confident reliance and a trust in God that knows that He's willing and He's able. Now I'm bringing my part to the table. And I'm saying, God, I'm giving you something to work with this year. I'm giving you something to work with this year. I'm going to put some tasks out there, God, that I need you to do. And I'm going to hold you. I'm going to, hand, I'm going to hold you at your word. And God is like, yeah, I like that kind of talk. Hold me at my word. Give me something challenging to do this year. I'm looking for a way to stretch out my hands. Give me something challenging to do this year. Give me something challenging to do in your life this year. Quit asking for the same old stuff. Give me something that I can do that I can show out with. That I can show everybody that I am God and besides me there is no other. So God in the name of Jesus. Oh, I pray God for a spirit of faith. Enlarge us Jesus. Oh, enlarge us God. Allow us, God, not to look at our test as you being against us, but allow us, oh God, to look at our test as that you're for us, that you're making us, you're developing us, you're growing us, you are expanding us. And God, I thank you for every need being met, and not only just our needs, God, our desires. I thank you, oh God, that this year we will stretch out on a greater level of faith than we haven't before. And I ask you, oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, that you would continue, God, to develop us. Allow us, God, to quit playing the church game. Allow us, oh God, to allow our emotions to be what our faith is. But allow us, oh God, to put faith in you, to speak your word, to speak your word out, to declare your word in our lives and in our circumstances. And I thank you, oh Jesus, that you're going to develop us. I thank you, God, that every need in this 
church is met. I thank you, God, that we have over and abundance. That in every area, over and abundance. Over and abundance. Say, God, this year, we have good problems this year. <laughs> good problems this year, God, that we're not trying to uh, fix crisis this year. We have too many, but we have good problems. We don't know where to put people. That's a good problem. We don't know when we need more bank accounts because we don't know where to put the money. We want good problems. I'm praying for every single person that's here today. They got that you would expand them in their life. God, allow them to expand on their businesses and grow in their ministries and grow in their relationships. Allow them, oh God, to walk by faith and not by sight this year. Allow them, Jesus, to go hard after you, to step out of the boat of mediocrity and step out on the water of risk and faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. Come on, give them a thumb and turn to praise everybody. Come on, give them a big hand and praise again. Come on, stand to your feet and give them a hand and praise everybody. I want you to stir your faith this morning. Stir it up yourself with the most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Stir your faith. Stir your faith. Stir your faith with your praise. Come on, stir your faith with your praise. Come on, stir your faith with your praise this morning. 